Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing one of the most popular kits from one of the most heavily marketed brands in the UK detailing industry, Easy Car Care's Weekend Warrior Kit. And as you can see from these images, my own car, which I'm going to be using the kit on, is certainly in need of a bit of TLC. The car has been a bit neglected of late, it's covered in animal matter, road film, dust. It needs a good deep clean, including the decontamination, and it certainly wouldn't do any harm to get a good layer of protection on there as well. Now having never used any of the products in this kit before, I'm keen to see if they are actually decent products or are they just bargain basement rubbish. So we'll do a quick overview of the kit and then we'll go through the products one by one, spending no more than a couple of minutes on each product and seeing if any of them are actually worth keeping. And just a quick reminder, although I don't normally do this, if you do like the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference going forward and I really would appreciate it. So just to show the products in the order I'll actually be using them, first up will be the Citrus Wash Pre-Wash, followed by the Sub-Zero Snow Foam. For the wheels there is the Dilutable Viper Non-Acidic Wheel Cleaner. Shampoo wise we have Ember Luxury Car Shampoo. For the decontamination we have the Aurora Iron Fallout Remover. And for the glass, the Clarity 2.0 window and glass cleaner. Next up will be the interior product, which in this range is Sleek Interior Trim Cleaner and Dressing. And for the final stage before applying the protection, there's Eliminator Paint Cleansing Panel Wipe. And finally, the Easy Car Care Ceramic Wax SiO2 Infused Carnuba Wax. So that's the kit I received when I purchased this. Now it does state on the website, some of the products may be interchangeable, you may get a different scented shampoo etc. But generally this is what you'll receive. So without further ado, let's just get stuck into it. First up then, the pre-wash product, Easy Car Care Citrus Wash. Now do remember throughout this that this isn't some sort of scientific lab test I'm carrying out here. At the end of the day, this is a kit intended for the normal person cleaning their own car on their driveway at the weekends. And that's exactly how I'm going to review it. So the instructions for this one say to dilute it 10 to 1 for a moderately dirty vehicle or 4 to 1 for oil and grease removal. As I would say this is somewhere in between at the minute, I've gone for as close to 1 to 7 as I can get. So having roughly 3.8 litres of water in my pump action pressure sprayer, I've added in the full 500 ml of the citrus pre-wash, making a total mixture of about 4.3 litres. Now depending on the user, this should do anywhere from 5 to 10 vehicles. But the fact that Easy Car Care say you can dilute this product down to 10 to 1 means you could make up to 5.5 litres with it, albeit a slightly weaker mixture. No pre-rinsing first of all on this occasion, I'm going straight in with the product onto the dry vehicle because I just want to see exactly how much impact it has on its own. A couple of months back I actually made a video reviewing the process of pre-rinsing the vehicle and whether it benefits you to do it or not, so I'll let you take a look at that yourselves if you're interested. It's obviously a controversial topic and everybody has their own opinion on it. So as you can see from this sped up footage, I've left the product to dwell as long as possible before the paintwork started drying out and then rinsed it off and taken a look and seen what impact it's actually had. Now obviously when the panel's still wet, it's going to look cleaner. But thankfully we have very soft water here so I can allow it to dry out for a couple of minutes, do a quick swipe test and just see what impact the citrus wash has had. Now given how dirty the car was to begin with, I think I can say that has removed a fair amount, although it's still far from perfect, I would still be quite dubious going in with a contact wash with that amount of dirt still on the car. Which brings us neatly on then to product number 2, Sub-Zero Advanced Snow Foam. Which also brings us neatly on to my first gripe in this review. As it says in the instructions, to load up your Easy Lance with an inch of Sub-Zero. Now straight away, I have two problems with that. Number one, I don't have an Easy Lance. And number two, I don't tend to work in inches when I'm measuring fluid. But for the sake of the review, in the Lance I'll be using, I'll measure what an inch is and we'll take it from there. So I'm using the Anakem Automotive Foam Cannon version 2, 
And as you can see here, an inch on this lance bottle is roughly 170 to 180 mils. Now as I've said, this isn't going to be a lab test, so I'm going to round that up to 200 mils per litre. Now I don't need a full litre, so what I'm going to do is add 100 mils of sub-zero to 400 mils of warm water, which to me is certainly a lot less complicated than fanning around with a measuring tape. I'm just going to repeat the same test we did with the citrus wash, only on the opposite side of the car. So apply the solution onto the dry, dirty panel and leave it to dwell for about 5 minutes. And I must say, it was a rather strange consistency of a snow foam, because once the initial layer had, had dropped off the panel, the rest of it just kind of sat there. It didn't look like it was doing anything. Obviously I don't know what's happened chemically underneath, but it certainly wasn't going anywhere and it didn't appear to be drying in. So we'll give it a third rinse off and just do the same swipe test we did on the other side. And again, I'm going to have to admit that as dirty as the car was, this does seem to have removed a significant amount of that dirt. It hasn't removed everything, but certainly more than I was expecting it to, I'll be honest. Shameless plug time, these are hose guides from Detail Guards, which you can get in the link below. Perfect if you're fed up with your hose getting caught in your car tyres on the way around. Back to the review then, and it's one thing testing the citrus wash and the snow foam separately, but generally speaking, when people are using these products, you use them together, you'll go around the car, Put a layer of citrus, certainly on the lower half of the car, and then go around and cover that or blanket it with the snow foam. This works both ways, it gives the citrus longer to dwell and it gives the snow foam a bit more kick. So having originally thought that both products did fairly well on their own, I wanted to see what they're like when you combine the two together. And looking at the ground at what was being dragged off the car, they certainly did seem to be doing a fairly decent job. It certainly appears to be the case that the products combined together, they're breaking the dirt down and they're dragging it off the car, which is exactly what pre-wash products are supposed to do. Remove as much dirt as you can before you go in with your contact wash. Otherwise, you would just be picking all that dirt up in your mitt and just dragging it all over the bodywork. There we go then. Initial thoughts on the citrus wash and the Sub-Zero. It has to be a thumbs up for both looking at that. The images speak for themselves and the products are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So we can put the phone away now, get on with rinsing both products off and just seeing how easily they actually come off the car. So while I'm rinsing it off, you'll notice in the background that it's a very bright and sunny day and it was quite warm, but thankfully where my driveway is situated, I'm able to keep the car in the shade throughout most of the test. More on that later on. Both products were dwelling on the car for around 5 minutes, but as you can see here, it's certainly coming off with great ease and it isn't leaving any residue in the driveway. The thumbs up stands. Moving on to the wheels then, and this is Viper Non-Acidic Wheel Cleaner. Now as per the instructions, the product can be used neat or you can dilute it as much as 10 to 1. So I've gone for a middle of the road, I've added 150ml of product to 600ml of water, or a 4 to 1 ratio. Now I should point out here that the wheels were actually cleaned before the pre-wash stage, but for some reason I've edited it the other way around. I have no idea why, answers on a postcard. So initially with this, what I wanted to do was spray it on, leave it to dwell for 5 minutes, which I'm about to speed up practically instantly, and then rinse it off and see how much of the dirt it's removed from the wheel. Although initially it doesn't look too bad, and certainly if you were in a hurry and you just needed the car to look half respectable, that would probably do. But if you look a bit closer, you'll see that certainly in the corners and harder to reach areas, it's a long way from being perfect. Now in the product's defence, and it certainly would be the case for most wheel cleaners, it does state that for heavy or stubborn soiling, work Viper in with a cleaning frenzy with the aid of a detailing or wheel brush. I.e. it's time to clean the wheels properly. And for that, I'm using the completely unrelated Easy Detail Wheel Cleaner Brush. And for the tyres, I'm going to use a non-Easy Car Care product, because I have this sample of Auto Glance Rebound Tire Cleaner, which I've heard nothing but great reviews about, and I just wanted to give it a go myself. Now, I'm not here to review that product, so I'm not going to say too much about it, other than saying I was very impressed with it, so much so that I've gone and bought 5 litres of it.
So after rinsing the wheels off, I can honestly say that Viper's done a good job, and that's another thumbs up. Three from three so far. Under the contact wash then, and this is the Mango Scented Ember Luxury Car Shampoo. Which is diluted one part product to 250 parts water, or in a 20 litre bucket that's 80 mils of shampoo. On a side note, I know at this stage at least one person will be delighted to see the El Matador's red towel make a reappearance. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Now for the most part here, I'm using the large garage therapy wash pad. Which regular viewers will know, I was a little bit on the fence about at first, but I must say after using this for probably the best part of 9 months, I have to say I'm definitely a fan of it now. But what about the shampoo itself? Well it smells pleasant, it certainly produces plenty of suds as you can see, and it doesn't dry out too quickly. It's easy to use, it's slick, I don't really have anything negative to say about it. It's a decent shampoo, it ticks all the boxes. That would appear to be 4 thumbs ups in a row. Thumbs ups? That doesn't sound right. Well anyway, whatever. It's four in a row, so far so good for this easy car care weekend warrior kit. And just as an added bonus, it rinses away with no problems whatsoever. That's the wash stage is complete, time to move on to decontamination. Now one type of product that doesn't appear in this kit is a tar and glue remover, which personally I would prioritise over a fallout remover as a regular cleaning product. I'm sure not everybody's going to agree with that, so give me your thoughts in the comments below. But what I did use was another sample from Autoglance, and this is Spartar. Now again, as with Rebound, I'm not here to review this product, I'm just using it because I wanted to remove the tar before moving on to the next stage. I will say it did a decent job, but probably required a bit more agitation than I'm used to, even on smaller pieces of tar. So back to the kit then, and this is Aurora, the fallout remover. Now we all know, or anybody that's used a fallout remover, remover, remover knows that they're not the most pleasant smelling products. And in this regard, Aurora is absolutely no exception. This is probably one of the most potent fallout removers sense that I've ever come across. You shouldn't inhale fallout removers anyway, but opening this and taking a whiff of it is definitely not for the weak stomach. But enough about the smell, what about the reaction? Well as you can see looking at the bodywork, there doesn't appear to be an awful lot of reaction. Now that's not due to a lack of fallout on the car, it hasn't been decontaminated for almost a year, and I do a lot of miles, at least 1500 to 2000 miles every month. Now the wheels I wouldn't expect much of reaction on because they were done when I done the MOT clean, but as for the bodywork, there should certainly be a lot of fallout on it. So with a little bit of snow foam left in the lance, I blanketed it over the fallout remover just to give it a little bit more time and see if it would react. And as you can see here with the, the slight or faint raspberry ripple effect within the foam, there certainly is something happening. There's a bit of pink in there, there's some sort of fallout reaction happening. But for me, there's not enough of a visible reaction for this to be a fallout remover that I would reach for on the shelves if it was sitting there. That's not to say that this isn't a good product and it isn't breaking down the oxidisation around fallout, but there's not enough visual indication that that's happening for this product to appeal to me. So whilst I'm not saying it's a bad product by any standards, based on this particular usage of it, I can't give it a thumbs up. So now I'm just going to dry the car off, put all my wash gear away and continue testing the rest of the products. So now that the car is squeaky clean and dry, it's time to move on with the next range of products. First up will be the glass cleaner, Clarity 2.0. And to be honest, I don't really have a lot to say about this one. It's a very high alcohol content and you can smell it straight away when you spray it. It does clean the glass, but I actually found it quite grabby. And compared to some glass cleaners you've used, it's not the most pleasant. It's not a bad product, but it's not great. Moving through these products quite quickly now, because I know I've lost the people with no concentration span by now. So we have sleek interior trim, cleaning and dressing. So thankfully, unlike the previous two products in the test, this one actually has a really pleasant smell. Now please don't ask me to describe the smell because I famously do not have a nose for scents. But whatever that scent is, it certainly makes sleek a very pleasant product to work with. And as you can briefly see in the inside of this cloth before the sun's taken over, it's actually done a fairly decent job of removing a layer of the dirt from the trim. Now one thing put me off this product looking at the label was the term trim dressing. I'm not really one for interior dressings, I don't particularly like them. I don't like my interiors to be covered in any sort of silicones or basically any sort of gloss off them whatsoever. But what I did find is once this product dried in it actually left more of a satin finish than a gloss and it's really not the worst. 
trying to keep in mind throughout this review that this is a product for the normal person to pick up at the weekends and give their car a once over. To be honest this actually is a fairly decent product to have in your kit for just giving the interior a quick wipe over once you've hoovered it out. Looks like we're back to the thumbs ups again. And for the final sprayable product before we apply the protection this is Eliminator Paint Cleansing Panel Wipe. Now there isn't really a lot to review with a panel wipe. Typically speaking, they're sprayable products with a high alcohol content that are going to easily remove any oils and greases from your paintwork, flash away very easily and give you a nice clean dry paint for your protection to bond to. And to be fair to Eliminator, it does exactly what you expect from a panel wipe. It left the paintwork nice, clean and dry, it flies away easily and personally I think it's a very good addition in a kit like this as it's going to give the wax a fighting chance to last as long as possible. Now I'm not quite sure what I was expecting to feel there as if I'm going to feel some sort of slickness. If you've just used a panel wipe and you do feel the slickness in your bodywork, well you've either used it wrong or it needs to go in the bin. You'd be glad to know we're nearly at the end, just the icing on the cake to go, the final piece of the puzzle, the last stage protection. Here we are then with the final product, the Easy Car Care SIO2 Infused Carnuba Ceramic Wax. It takes almost as long to say as it does to apply. And as soon as you take the lid off the jar, you're hit with a lovely aroma that just gives you a great first impression. But let's be honest, the scent is just a cosmetic feature. I need to know what the wax is like to apply, how easy is it to remove, and how long is the protection going to last. Now obviously the final of those three points we're not going to find out in today's video. You're just going to have to subscribe to the channel and stick around to see how long the wax does actually last. But for now we can look at the application and the removal. And on the application I will say that it is quite a soft oily wax which makes it very pleasant and easy to use but that does also mean that it would be a very easy wax to over apply. Particularly on a warm day as waxes by their very nature do get softer the warmer they get. Now waxes are no different to any other product and each one is different so it's always important to read the instructions before you do apply it. My preferred method for a wax, typically speaking, is to wax the entire vehicle, allow it to dry off and then buff it all off in one go. However with some waxes, and this is where you need to be careful, you need to do one panel at a time because some need to be removed within 2-3 to three minutes. Thankfully this isn't one so I could just crack on with my normal application method. Time to buff off then, and you may remember earlier in the video, roughly 7.5 to 8 minutes, I did say about the sunny weather but I was able to keep the car in the shade, but when I was applying the wax it was a nice bit of cloud cover, but of course as soon as I finished the last panel, the clouds disappeared, the sun came out and honestly it felt like the temperature had gone up about 10 to 15 degrees. It got very warm very quickly, and wax is most definitely not a product you want to be buffing off in warm direct sunlight. You see the biggest difference between a wax and most sprayable products is that when you work with those in direct sunlight they'll dry in too quickly and you can't get them off. A wax on the other hand won't dry in at all, waxes will get softer and it'll turn to more a liquefied state and it makes it even harder to get off. As you're buffing it you're just pushing it further and further around. Now thankfully the direct sunlight was only on the rear of the car and I did get it off pretty quickly without too much hassle. As for the rest of the car, there was a bit of excess buffing, but it may have been because I did use, as you can see, slightly too much product. I didn't completely over apply it, but it perhaps was a little bit over zealous on the bottom. So while I'm buffing the rest of the wax off, we'll do a quick overview on the full kit. So the two pre-wash products, the Sub-Zero and the Citrus Wash, I liked. The Shampoo, I liked. The Weed Cleaner, I liked. They're all decent products for your everyday weekend user. Now the Aurora Fallout Remover, I wasn't overly fussed on. It's not that it wasn't doing its job, I don't know if it was doing its job because it didn't have any indicator that it was doing its job. So I'm by no means saying it was a bad product, I'm just saying that on my usage in this particular test, I didn't find it a particularly good or appealing product. And the same can be said for the Clarity 2.0 glass cleaner. I think if you want a no nonsense high alcohol glass cleaner, this may well be the one for you, but that's not the sort of product I want to go for. I didn't find any pleasantness in using it, it was just clean the glass, job done, move on to the next job. As for the sleek interior cleaner and dressing, this is probably the product I was most surprised with in the test. I'm not into interior dressings in any way, they don't appeal to me in the slightest and I was expecting this to leave that sort of glossy greasy finish but it actually didn't, it left kind of, I suppose it left a kind of sleek finish, funny enough. And that brings us on to the Eliminator Paint Cleansing Panel Wipe. There's not really much you can say about a panel wipe, 
It has a specific job and it carried that job out. There's not really much more to say. I just thought it was a good inclusion in a kit. You don't normally see a product like that in a kit like this. As for the wax, well it was certainly easy to apply and bar a slight issue with the weather, which wasn't the wax's fault, it was pretty easy to remove. Only time will tell how durable that's going to be, so if you stick around we will find out over the next few weeks. So overall view of this kit, I can honestly say I'm very happy with it. What I will say that I didn't mention earlier on, was I actually got this kit, funny enough, in a sale, and I got it for $24.99. I think the kit normally retails at $39.99, which even that, for everything in it, is excellent value. I can't complain about it. I didn't think everything was perfect, but it was never going to, let's be honest. But overall, I'm certainly far from disappointed. And that about wraps it up for this one. So anybody who has made it this far, I truly do appreciate it. I don't even have enough words to thank you. So, thank you. Do take care and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.